Peace, y'all. Welcome to another episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast, available everywhere you listen to your podcasts. Thank y'all for rocking with me, man. Truly, truly appreciate it, for real, for real. Shout out to my folk who be listening all over the world. My folk in Asia, in the UK, Spain, France, Australia. What up, Italy? And our people who are right here, right here at home, man. Big ups to my guy, Joe, in Vancouver, for rocking with me. Definitely means a lot. If you have questions or comments, you can hit us up. Cliffnotes at gmail.com. That's cliffnotes at gmail.com. Yo, man, just as a special thank you, I got a pair of tickets. If you want to see phony people in the Portland, Oregon area, they're going to be in town September the 20, September the 18th in Portland at Jack London Review. You can go into the pot, man. Just send an email to cliffnotes at gmail.com and uh, you'll be in the running to see phony people right here in Portland, Oregon. All right, y'all, let's get into this one, man. This is a special episode. Excited for this one. I had an opportunity to chop it up with this, with this young lady. And uh, a really, really cool conversation, man. I've rocked with her on the Welcome to the Neighborhood radio show. I've rocked with her at the local hip-hop showcase, Mike Check. I'm just a fan of what she does, man, a fan of who she is. It was cool to be able to catch up with her before she goes out on tour. So check out this latest episode of the Clip Notes podcast. Featuring my friend, Lisa Vasquez. Let's go. Support for the Cliff Notes podcast comes from Acapella Apparel, an idea born from a love of hip-hop, funk, and soul music and its surrounding cultures. With fashion being a huge visual part of the cultures, they've created expressive images to pay homage, invoke nostalgia, and showcase the elements that make up the lifestyle and cultures of these genres. Acapella, apparel for the music lifestyle. For more information, check out acapella.com. That's A K E. P E L E dot com. I used to do, I used to do for like a minute, I was doing like live streaming to YouTube, and mm-hmm. YouTube flipped the script, and it was like you have to have a million followers in order to live stream. What? Yeah. So I can live stream to my, to like, to my, to my personal Facebook page. Right. I think nobody wants to look at my personal Facebook page. So. Oh no! What? <laughs> so I just do, I just do it for, uh, for like promo stuff. Not just, but I do it for promo stuff. Yeah. But um, but yeah, y'all. So we back. It's another episode. Cliff Notes podcast. You got DJ Cliff. Uh, you know, podcast is available everywhere. We are now on Pandora. So if you rock with Pandora, that's another place you can listen to the Cliff Notes podcast. Um, or you can check us out on the X Ray Podcast Network. Just go to X Ray Pod. Um, dot FM. Uh, yeah, this one's dope, man. This one is a long time coming. I'm super, super psyched to have an opportunity to sit and chop it up with this artist. Uh, I've been slipping. That's what I was saying before we turned the mics on. I seriously, seriously been slipping because uh, this artist has been doing stuff for a minute and I just been slipping. So I am throwing myself at the mercy of, of her. But uh, let them know who you are. Well, I'm Lisa Vasquez. Yeah, I've been... Uh in Portland for about four years now and uh yeah as he said I've been doing a bunch of stuff for a while I don't know we'll get we'll get more into it (laughs) in the podcast but I've been playing music for 20 plus years and it's been evolving for for that whole time and yeah it's always always evolving that's just so crazy to me that you've been doing it um so first up Lisa thank you so much for coming through yeah absolutely thanks for having me so it's I always you know you get an opportunity to reflect a little bit the time i've told you this already but the time that i remember first uh connecting with you or seeing you do your thing was shout out to renee lopez Mm -hmm. she was doing a a, a, an art uh, gallery situation and so i went to to support her she's the homie (laughs) and you were there you were there playing and she introduced me to you you were in the midst of your set so we didn't get a really chance to chop it up Mm -hmm. but that's where like it's stuck in my mind lisa vasquez and and, uh, and then you came and you rocked mic check, which mm-hmm. was dope. Yep. And I've just you know just continued to take notice of all the work that you that that you've been doing. But like you said, you've been doing this for twenty years. What? Yeah. Some. I mean, you know, I probably started playing music before that. But as far as like playing in bands and stuff, um, it's been about that long. And as I said, the evolution has been a lot of like different genres. Um, 
like different world music stuff. I used to play in like Latin groups, doing percussion and backup vocals. And then I did singer songwriter stuff for a while um, where I play guitar and sing. Did a couple like duo uh, projects where the other person would be playing guitar, I'd be playing congas and I'd sing and um, played in uh, some hip hop groups where they were in big, big bands with horns and all that kind of stuff. And then I did percussion and backup vocals. Um, then I just decided like I was, I wanted to learn how to do my own production work. So I went to school for audio engineering and then learned production that way. And from there, that's kind of how I started doing what I'm doing now, but it started out, uh, I was doing live looping kind of like you saw at Renee's yeah. thing, yeah. um, where I would just loop a drum sampler, loop my voice, and then just, uh, rap and sing over that as the beat. But then when I found the MPC, that's currently like where my love is right now. It's just like, okay, this is it. This is, <laughs> this is kind of, it's not like where the road ends, but it's, yeah. you know, I'm stuck on it for a while because it's just so many possibilities on being able to use your own instruments and then integrate sampling and for live uh, performance as well. I've learned a lot of a little hacks to try to keep it live, um, but while still uh, having a lot of options with the machinery. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. It's so crazy. <laughs> um, the like, but when when I see when I see what you do live, and then watch your moves on on online, like I feel like you just like you hip hop to the core, man. Like the <laughs> fact that you have that that amazing background, I think is cool. And like you said, it builds into what you continue to do mm -hmm. moving forward. But where did where did that love of hip hop come from? I mean, I guess it just started. Uh... I don't know when I was a teenager it's just kind of the the music that I that I was drawn to and even R&B really before that I would say um like uh but yeah R&B and hip hop stuff just uh was something that I naturally gravitated towards and then once I started to play music I experimented with a couple other genres like I said like with world music and stuff which I still love but you know just something about um hip hop really uh it's great at telling a story. It's so raw. It's a uh, political, social, you know, it touches on a lot of different subjects. Um, but in such like a raw way, I think that was a, a lot of what really made me fall in love with it, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just from there, I tried to, uh, get involved as much as I could, you know, still with the rapping, I'm, uh, it's always a work in progress, you know, <laughs> and it's, all, it's like, that's, that's an area I'm trying to like juggle so many things with the, with the singing and um the production side and you know so yeah always evolving like i'm saying so yeah. yeah well and with that because that is that is your performance when we see you we see you do all three mm -hmm. in a set mm -hmm. do you feel like you would you want to get to a place where you focus in as a producer or as a singer or as a rapper yeah, it's interesting because, um, you know, I get asked that a lot in various different ways, you know, like even when uh, when Ace was coming to record at my studio, he's Shout just to like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it was really dope that he, he came over and was, uh, you know, laying down some stuff and then was just like, yeah, you know, have you ever thought about just, you know, giving yourself a break with all this using a computer or something um, or having a DJ? And, you know, for me, it's it's just like, it's part of my instrumentation. So it's really, I kind of thought about it a little bit later, like, you know, say for a guitarist that also wants to rap or sing or like, you know, with Sting, like, you know, playing bass and singing, like people are like, well, you know, you could just do one and make your life a lot easier. It's like, well, it's just kind of what I do. I don't know really how to, how to not do that, I guess is, is my best answer to that. It's just, it's just what I do. That's so, what's yeah. That's what's um, so, like I said, you're kind of doing a little bit of prep for for getting getting a chance to sit and chop it up with you. Uh, I, I look back at the work that you've done. Like a lot of artists, I think, have an opportunity to work on their art in uh, in small groups, either by themselves in the bedroom studio or just like with crew building. But the thing that that I think is so cool is you've been making music for a minute, but you've also been on the road for a minute. Like when I look at all the touring that you've done, mm -hmm. like, man, <laughs> oh, man. Like, it's about to get crazy. <laughs> definitely not new to this, man. Um, it's been, it's been, it's been a number of years that you have been taking what you do on the road and touching people outside of the Portland metro area, which I think a lot of artists in Portland have a desire to do. 
you know, I talk to a lot of artists and they say, that's mm-hmm. the thing I want to do. I got to get on the road. Like they're releasing great material and they've done shows all over Portland. They say, I got to get out of Portland. Mm-hmm. For you, how, how did you do it? How did you, how did you, how'd you do it? Yeah. It's one of those things. It's weird. Sometimes I just, I, I approach things backwards, I guess you'd say, where <laughs> it's just like, I, I do the touring before I even have like the album or the material that's yeah. ready to go. And yeah. it's just, I don't really see an obstacle there because, you know, I've seen, I've, uh, I've known a lot of booking agents and really all it is, is just, just emailing somebody. Like if you can write an email, you can book a tour. That's really, that's really that simple. Or even reaching out on Facebook or Instagram nowadays, you know? So, um, it's just a matter of, of just doing a little bit of research and then reaching out and, even not necessarily doing research, but just reaching out to your community, like asking on Facebook, you know, hey, where's a a good promoter in this city or what's a good venue in this city or reaching out to other artists, you know, in those cities and asking them, you know, and those kind of things, just get your information and then send out your email and just shoot your shot. (laughs) You know, it's like, (laughs) it's kind of like that. So the first time I ever really booked a little tour, that's actually how I met Raquel DeVar, shout out. (laughs) And, uh, Yeah, and uh, Kelly Mack, the three of us went on a little tour called the Triple Threat Tour, and I booked that, and it was um, basically, I just wanted to do a little all-female tour, and it was pretty a pretty short run, I would say, like 10 shows or less than that, but I didn't know uh, Raquel at the time, so I just I had found her uh, through Facebook. I was like, oh, she's dope, and she should come with us, hit her up, and she was like, yeah, because she had never really done um, any solo stuff before outside of... I mean, she, I think she's done some stuff in the Bay Area where she's from. But um, anyway, so, yeah, as that kind of thing, I just, you know, put put together a couple links of, of each one of our material, send it out to the venues, and it was that simple. <laughs> I, you know you're supposed to make it sound like crazy hard. Like, <laughs> right? I had to send 400 emails. and It's really, I'll say it's super annoying, and you don't get, it's like if people are expecting to get, like, some big payout, because even, like, established artists, this is one thing I've encountered, too, like, knowing a lot of bookers and promoters, it's like even established artists struggle to get their fees. And, you know, it, so that's one thing. If you're expecting some big payout, it's like if you've never been to a city you don't really have a draw there yet. So that's what the promoters are going to take into account. And if there's like a built in, um, if there's a, sh- uh, like a weekly or a monthly that happens, like if somebody comes through mic check, right. you know, that's what they want to try to do. You got to try to find those in other cities. Right, right. But if you're just going to some other random venue, like somebody like couldn't just come here and just, if nobody's ever heard of them, just be like, I'm going to play at Doug fur and pack the house. Right. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> like you either have to have a, a local act that's going to already, fill the place or you know or at least draw a big crowd or you know expect to just get a door deal and you just hope for the best yeah. kind of thing so yeah it's something that i want to ask you and since you since you mentioned it since you touched on it i'll ask now i i i so appreciate your art what your artistry like what you do as an artist and you've shown proficiency in all three areas production um singing rapping and carry yourself so well as an artist just as a human being and if i'm talking about supporting your your art whether it be you know a live performance on the radio whatever the case may be it's it's been it's my it's sort of my what i would think about to say lisa vasquez female mcc or female producer but i also understand that oftentimes artists want to just be referred to as artists Mm mm-hmm does that how does that resonate with you do you do you not prefer to be called i mean noted as being female just an artist or does that matter yeah see i don't i don't mind it and i know that there's some some female artists that that do mind that you know as as uh what's the word yeah 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 yeah. well or just like yeah using it as an identifier yeah Yeah, yeah. and and uh you know it's like uh somehow taking away from them as just being an equal artist Mm -hmm. you know but i think it is just because it's it's a fact that we're a minority Mm -hmm. you know and that we're um trying to establish that more more and more females are becoming prominent and in the forefront and having talent and not just selling sex and all this stuff it's like i think it's important to to put ourselves out there and really show uh that that we're doing something and so it's kind of like just 
a recognition that we're out here. So it doesn't, it never really has bothered me in that way. I mean, I think that you could tell the difference when people are trying to just use it like as a, as a token sort of thing, or just to like fill a quota or some kind of, I don't know, just in a, some kind of bad way. But Mm -hmm. I think for the most part, it's, it's just, it's a, you know, yeah. Way to uplift that there's more females out there doing, doing stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and that's the way that I, that's the way that I personally look at it. Always want to be careful to be sensitive to, to how people, how people move. I know that one of the things that you've spoken of, though, that one of the things you've spoken of and one of the things that you that is a part of your movement is female empowerment. And like you said, being able to celebrate uh, an artist who is female, who is about the art, not just about the glamour, the glitz, whatever, like to focus on the art. Mm -hmm. But that idea of of celebrating female artists and female artistry, I, I think it's cool to make note that like that beat that you just heard. Yeah like a lady made that beat because I think if you, if we just look at the art first and then figure out who made it, I think you get an opportunity to really, really celebrate the art and then, okay, yeah, whatever, female, male, black, white, green, orange, whatever, whoever, but the, like the beat is dope. Like the art is dope. And, um, I I feel like that's what you, that's what you've done thus far. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what I'm trying to do. You know, it, it should never like, take away from the art or be some used as some sort of like handicap oh well she's just a female mc or a female producer or whatever so she gets like a free pass in right. some kind of way shape or form that's that's i think when it can be used as a negative but i think that especially when um you know i think a lot of younger females that are wanting to be able to express themselves creatively are they're just shy you know i mean a lot of people in general but i mean i think especially just females as a generalization just in society Mm -hmm. we've been uh you know oppressed in a lot of ways of just being able to voice ourselves voice our opinions just stand up for ourselves in general and things like that and so you know when it comes to just being having the confidence to to get up on a stage and to express themselves to see another woman doing that is really empowering and so again like kind of like you said it's really it is important to to kind of make note of that so other women can really see that use that as as confidence yeah you know to get out get out there so and it's cool for you i think to be in a position and recognize that you're in that position for other young ladies who are coming up to look up to to look Mm -hmm. at you as a role model to look at the things that you've been able to do um and the things that you're about to do (laughs) and and say wow i can like it's okay for me to do that yeah, I mean, it's one of the be- the biggest perks of what I do is I get, you know, women and girls coming up to me and just saying like, oh, man, that inspires me so much to do whatever it is they do, play violin or to write or to, you know, do to study more about about production or whatever it is, you know, like there's something they've always been interested, but then always been kind of shy about doing it. And they're like, oh, wow, like, you know, they see it really happening and then it just like pushes them a little harder to to take that next step. And that's, that's such a, such a big deal for me that it it can inspire people in that way. No doubt. No doubt. Um, you're from Portland. Uh, I was born here originally. Yeah. So, um, but then I lived in Eugene for a long time and moved back here. Yes. Not, not too long ago. So that's what's up. (laughs) Yeah. Um, being, being celebrated in the Portland music scene. Now when people say Lisa Vasquez, I mean, a lot of folk know who you are. Does that, like, do you, how do I ask this? <laughs> like, does it resonate with you at all, the, the the success that you've achieved? I know that it's still a journey, that there's still more that you want to do. There's still more that you're working towards. But just in terms of the local celebrity that you've achieved, does that even resonate with you? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting, though, with all of that is because locally, um, I feel like a lot of these people um, in the scene have just become, you know, it's like, my friends now it's like a community so it doesn't really feel much different than just becoming friends with people as you live in a city for a while so I've kind of just you know and yeah I wouldn't say you know it's not it hasn't really changed how 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 I feel in Portland or or anything like that like I wouldn't even think about it that way I guess is what I'm trying to say like it's just that's a that's an interesting thought because I mean I've you know I've played a bunch of shows and everything but um there's still more I could do here for sure and um 
I'm so hyper focused on my own personal goals mm-hmm. and I'm really hard on myself. So I just, I really see like, oh, I haven't finished my album yet and I haven't put out this video or whatever it is that I haven't done. Yeah. That it's like sometimes it's hard to remind myself of what I actually have done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah, something I struggle with all the time. So, no doubt. Your uh, music that you have released, things that you have done, have gotten recognition outside of the Portland scene. And that's got to feel. That's got to feel good, I would imagine, that you see people, rec- like people that you don't know, who yeah. are recognizing what you've done. Well, and that was what was crazy. So, yeah, and uh, when I put out my EP, um, I had two little write-ups that, were, yeah, were just totally out of nowhere. Um, one was uh, Chi Chi Talkin, shout out. <laughs> um, he he wrote up something on scratchedvinyl.com, um, a review of my album. It's totally unexpected. It was a great review. And then I got, like, best... Uh, Best New R&B Soul Top 5 or something like that and Bandcamp, which was totally unexpected as well. And that was huge for me because even in, like, you know, you say that I'm getting recognition in Portland, but, like, you know, I don't get write-ups in right. in Portland very often. I did get one, like, Top 5 list, something, uh, like, uh, something rap songs, something like, like that. Like, like one of the best, the best in Portland with what happened with the situation. Yeah, yeah, one of those kind of things. Um and I feel like that was probably me that voted for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that definitely to answer your question, that felt really good. And it still does like when I get hit up by um anything that's like out of state, um, you know, whether it be for interviews, which ha- has happened to me several times this year, just random interviews from either podcasts or radio stations that are out of state that, that hit me up and want to do interviews i'm like wow yeah. like where did you like yeah. how how did this okay yeah great <laughs> amazing it makes you feel like i'm doing something right no doubt no doubt uh, a couple of things that, that uh, i wanted to i wanted to for sure talk about um so you mentioned it i think at the, at the i think we had the microphones on when you talked about going to school for for engineering which, mm-hmm. is, which is crazy um one of the things that i know from talking to other people or maybe from other podcasts that i've listened to that engineering just like specifically the genre of hip hop is a male dominated industry. Yes. Does is that something that you've and I think I think correct me if I'm wrong, but I think knowing you there aren't there aren't very many obstacles that you see as obstacles. But I mean, how has that impacted the way that you that you move in terms of engineering? Um well, I think if I was going to so like there was a short period of time after I finished uh that schooling, I kind of wanted to uh, experiment with the live sound aspect of things, yeah. and so I did a little apprenticeship with this company that was in Eugene um Velvet Thunder shout out and uh yeah, they were really dope and that's definitely I think live sound in particular is an extremely male dominated field in as far as like engineering is concerned, and you know it it was it was really intriguing to me and i i kind of realized quickly that it wasn't something i wanted to do at least not right now but that was it wasn't for the reason of being male dominated but um yeah when it comes to like studio engineering though i think that because you get so much control of your own environment mm-hmm. for the most part like i say if i had a, a studio where i was uh just high or uh charging for sessions and stuff i wouldn't really feel strange as long as I knew knew what I was doing and knew my equipment right, so I right. mean with live sound it's just every single every single changeover with the band every single venue you're doing if you're doing like a festival or changing venues I mean there's so many things that are up in the air all the time it just is a very stressful <laughs> stressful job so praises to anyone who does live sound I no mean doubt. yeah <laughs> like you have to deal with a lot and you don't get a lot of love sometimes you're the guy that always gets blamed for everything always, and, always. And it's not your fault there. at least most of the time it's <laughs> yeah, not exactly um okay so a couple things a couple other things I want to touch on uh Goldie Awards yes dude oh uh, that's oh crazy. yeah I mean I always like I'm like oh yeah <laughs> so that was, that was that was 2018 Yes. That experience must have been crazy. That was still to the... Like, yeah, that was one of the most amazing experiences thus far. Um, just getting the email that I had been invited to do it. And they're like, you get flown out and you're put up in, in New York and you get to meet... I get to like meet all these judges. I'm just like mind blown. Yeah. I couldn't even... Yeah, I couldn't even fathom what was happening. So but so for folk who are listening who, who may not be familiar, uh, what is the Goldie Awards? So the Goldie Awards is a beat battle and DJ battle that's put together by A-Track. 
and um, his record label Fool's Gold. And then it's also sponsored by like Adidas and Teamwork and some other uh, sponsors, I believe. But anyway, so they it's international competition and they fly out eight DJs and eight producers to battle um, in Brooklyn and they have celebrity judges. So yeah, with the one that I was at, it was like LP, Just Blaze, Mark Ronson, um, Anna Leno. Yeah, of course, A-Track was there. I mean, just goes on and on and yeah, Craze, DJ Craze. Um, it was it was insane. And so <laughs> I was feeling pretty confident until like right when the judges started like rolling up on the stage. I'm like, oh my God, it's like they're 10 feet away from me. What do I do? Oh my God. It was crazy. <laughs> but, but again, like what, what an experience, man. Yeah. It had to have just felt like nuts. It was unbelievable. And one cool thing is like the other um, contestants that were there, like some of the producers, um, this one guy, uh, Matematico, he lives in Venezuela and we're still in contact. We d did like a little collab video recently even. And uh, this uh, girl from Mexico, Mawik, she, her and I still keep in contact and me and some of the other DJs and like DJ Buck Rogers, the winner of this year. Um, he, him and I are still in contact and we're, he's helping me do some shows in, in Texas when I roll through on this tour. And so it's just like, it's really made some lasting connections. It's, it's pretty great. That's gotta be cool to, to, to see these things that come out of such a, such an, a great event like that, a great opportunity mm -hmm. to realize, wow, I didn't even expect that that was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, the same thing with like touring and everything, just any shows that you do. And I should just say, like, even backing up with, with with a lot of shows that I've done randomly, say in Portland, for example, that didn't necessarily like pay out that well or wasn't really necessarily about the show. But sometimes the connections that you make in those shows are just priceless. Yeah. And, you know, those kind of things. um, yeah, you really, you really got to sometimes weigh those things out as an artist. Um, and not to say that you shouldn't value yourself and try to get money for your time, but um, there's value in things other than money. <laughs> you know, people got to remember that sometimes. Those human connections, those, you know, just, yeah, connections. Yeah, that's, I mean, and that's huge. And being someone who has had an opportunity to curate events, uh, I... I understand the desire and, and, and the value and like you said, getting reimbursed for your art. I think that that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. But also looking at, like you said, so much of what I do is, is, is about connections, is about networking, is about building, building those relationships. Mm -hmm. Because those are the relationships that can turn into pretty amazing things. Um, exactly. Just because you never know who's connected to whom. Not that that's why you're doing it, but... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, it just when you build those relationships, like you said, it's just you never know, you never know where it's going to go, yeah. what's going to what it's going to lead to. And, you know, keeping it about about that versus just very cut and dry about the money. I mean, that's something that's that turns a lot of people off, mm -hmm. you know, in this industry, like, yeah, be about your money, but don't do it at the expense of integrity and you know, just being a person. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, no, absolutely, like, absolutely. You know, so, yeah, you got to find that balance. Chopping up with my girl, Lisa Vasquez. Um, I'm going to take a quick second to, uh, speaking of speaking of building relationships, a little over a year ago, I had an opportunity to, to interview DJ Renz on the podcast, and we built into a really cool relationship. And for a little over a year now, Acapella Apparel has been a supporter of the Cliff, Note, the Cliff Notes podcast, which is, which is really, really cool because it was one of those things that, I wasn't really looking for it just grew organically mm -hmm. so uh like i said for about over for a little over a year now acapella has been a supporter of of the, of the podcast and so i definitely want to shout them out and encourage you to check out the website because they have such dope gear and it's summertime and the tees that they have the designs that they have are, are nuts i don't know if they're working on some new stuff but uh they 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 just do really good quality quality stuff man so check them out the website is acapella.com that's a k e p e l e dot com shout out to acapella Pearl. um okay so another thing that 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 i want to talk about was was soundset oh yeah did earlier this year uh 
that was the next dream come true that I still <laughs> pinching myself going that happened oh my god that happened like you're 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 on these stages now with I would assume forgive me if I'm wrong with people who you are a fan of oh my god yes idols for sure like black star uh run the jewels gosh i'm spacing like sarok and atmosphere uh joey badass was there um it just yeah went on and on it was so crazy and yeah uh, just blaze spinderella cut chemist and dj abilities you know on the little on the the essential element stage and um that was yeah another experience that i just am so grateful for and still pinching myself <laughs> just that, that happened and minnesota is so dope like people i didn't even realize until a couple years ago three years ago that i discovered soundset um just how hard they go for hip-hop in yeah. minnesota but it totally makes sense now you know just i mean that rhyme sayers is there yeah. um but they love their hip-hop and you know one thing that's really cool about soundset is um you know not only do they have just like the great music lineup but they try to or they do touch on like the other elements of hip-hop so they have like graph walls and they have a skate park and they have car show and like a cypher like rap stage and so they just try to like bring in all those like community elements in with it and not just have it be just about people rapping at you, you know, right. <laughs> or whatever, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but yeah. And then they, you know, but they bring it with the music for sure every time and try to give a, you know, a variety. It's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of golden era stuff, but then also coupled with, um, you know, some modern stuff that, you know, to try to please everybody. So. Yeah. Um, it's so crazy to be able to go, I mean, shoot, so many people, I was about to say would, but so many people do pay just to go and attend but to like be on the stage to rock a crowd at an event like that, man. Oh my God. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, it's like 40,000 person capacity and you know, the, I would, I would go without, you know, playing there too, just cause the lineup lineup is so crazy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just to be able to experience it from a, a different angle was yeah. Unbelievable. You know, just being able to like chop it up with slug a couple times and like, you know, just seeing, all these other artists that I've only seen on TV before. Right, and I'm right. just like, oh, no, this is right there. <laughs> like, oh my God. I mean, I've met Talib Kweli before and, you know, but still, it was still, you know, just incredible. Again, to see all these, these artists just doing their thing, all concentrated into one, one day. It's not, you know, they call it a festival, right. which it, it is, but you know, I think typically people think of mul- multiple days right, right, with right. a festival, but anyway, yeah. That's crazy. Cause I mean, I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about hip hop legends, man. Mm. Who you're, yeah. who you have an opportunity to vibe with. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, definitely. Um, the what? If it's fair to ask, what was the what was the highlight of the event of Soundset? Um, well, seeing Black Star oh was gosh. was definitely one of the highlights. Um, his atmosphere is great. I've seen him perform before, though. Um, but yeah, he meeting atmosphere. That was yeah. I met I when I first. Uh, flew in to Minnesota, got off the plane, was waiting to get my luggage. I was just zombied out, turned around, and I see zombied out (laughs) just sitting there. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I was like, oh, should I talk to him? I'm sure he's just so tired. But I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get another chance to run into him. Um, You know, and he ended up being super nice. It was awesome. Like, I just was like, hey, I'm playing at the festival. And he's like, oh, dope. And then took a picture together and... Mm -hmm. Then later on, um, saw him by like the, there's a, a big tent with the, with food for the artists Mm -hmm. and he was rolling around in a golf cart and he comes up and he's like, Hey, you want to be on my Instagram? And I was like, Oh my God. (laughs) Uh, yeah. And so he took another picture of me and put it on his Instagram story. So that was, (laughs) you know, it's just like a little thing, but it like totally made my day. I was like, Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, so playing sound set, did that did that lead to or I should ask what was the genesis of the of the tour that you're about to embark upon uh well with the tour um yeah that's interesting too the uh the girl Eliza Etern shout out mm-hmm. dope ass MC if you guys don't know about her check her out mm-hmm. Eternmusic.com. oh my god I should know this yeah Eternmusic.com. <laughs> 
And anyway, but we just met online. I've still never met her in person. Oh, work. And we talk on the phone a lot now, though, because we're booking this tour together. And so, you know, I feel like I know her already. Um, but yeah, we had just started liking, liking each other's stuff online for a while. And I think other fans of both of ours kept like tagging each other and think, oh, you guys should work together. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then one day she just hit me up on Instagram and asked if I wanted to, to do some shows and possibly a tour with her and being the person that I am, that I'm always like, yeah, why not? You yeah, know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and especially cause it was for, I, she was somebody that I was definitely thinking about hitting up about doing something with in the near future. So it was like she read my mind and and now here we are booking a 60 day tour, both coasts. So it's gonna be over two months long and it's gonna be insane. That's crazy. <laughs> it's called That's the crazy. Run the Map Tour. And you guys watch out for it. We'll probably go to your city anywhere you are in the States. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when's the kickoff? Uh, August 8th is the first show and that's actually going to be, well, it starts off in Florida. So we were playing with Henri, actually Henri Shout Osborne. Out to Henri, and man. That's the homie. Yeah. So we're doing that, um, that show in Winter Haven, Florida, actually. Yeah. And then from there, we're just headed up north, kind of hugging the coast, um, on the East coast and flipping around, hitting Minnesota again, and then coming back down and... Yeah, we're going to see, uh, yeah, Natalie's putting a show together for us in Chicago Shout with the YGB. No doubt, uh, no doubt. And, yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's it's so interesting, yeah, all these just, like, random connections I've had along the way and how they still will connect with other parts of the country. Yeah. And, yeah. Networking, man. Networking, building relationships. Yep. Um, are there any places on the tour that you are especially excited to see, like places you haven't been yet? Yeah, let me try to think. Well, um, we're doing Toronto, so in Canada, I have I feel like I've been there before, but it it was probably when like on a family trip or something like that when I was little. So yeah. I haven't <laughs> like as an adult, I haven't definitely haven't played any shows there. Yeah. So that's somewhere I'm pretty excited about. Um, a lot of places on the East Coast, I really haven't haven't gone actually. Like uh, when I did this other tour for my EP. Um, a couple years ago, we kind of went with Sammy Warmhands and Gradient, shout out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we went to uh, as far as Minnesota, I think, or Wisconsin, and then just kind of shot back. So it's the East Coast. I've I've been to New York and D.C., but that's about it. So, yeah, a lot of these places are really like new territory. Yeah. Haven't played in Atlanta. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. Um, Boston, Philly any of those spots yeah just it's all gonna be fresh <laughs> fresh for me so dope so dope i'm excited i'm just excited to hear uh to hear stories when you get back man yeah I'm, that experience i want to try to be good about the documenting so <laughs> which you are like you have a you have a, you have a really good social media presence i think thank you yeah i've been slacking the last couple of weeks but um it's just that, it's like sometimes the editing i get to uh, yeah i that that holds me up sometimes but um yeah, I think I need to get over it. <laughs> just like put Bruh, it out there look, before. It's like, it's never going to be perfect. Just do it. I'm totally with you. I, I capture, like I got the GoPro sitting up there and I, I capture, I try to capture a lot of stuff. My wife was asking me about that and I was telling her like, yeah, I've got a lot of footage that's just sitting because I'm not good at editing. And so it takes a long time to do it. Mm -hmm. So you, you just have all this footage you're just sitting on and eh, I'll do something with it one day maybe. Yeah, one thing I noticed, like, when I was for doing the Flip It Friday stuff, like, editing those takes me a long time because I'll sit and re-watch, like, clips over and over again, mm -hmm. and, like, nitpick about them. But really, that's, like, mostly, the, like, the actual editing part. I mean, it takes still a while, mm -hmm. but if I would cut that process out of it, it would take me less than half the time because then I'm just, like, not just, like, re-watching stuff over and over and nitpicking. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, I was going to ask about Flip It Friday. So let's talk about that. Um, so for folk who don't know, what is Flip It Friday? So that's a beat making series that I started about a year ago, I'd say. And um, it's I have it on my YouTube channel. Um, it's, yeah, so I pick a record and or an audience. Or, ugh, what? 
yeah, I guess audience member, <laughs> whatever you call it. I can't, I can't talk today. Your fans, your, fans, your massive yes, fan base. No. <laughs> <laughs> My live studio audience. No, um, but yeah, so somebody will pick a, a record and I'll, I'll sample it and make a beat live and record the process. So that's what Flip It Friday is, yeah. <laughs> and it's cool because I remember I was talking to, talking to someone about Flip It Friday and they were, they, they, weren't familiar with it so they went and checked it out and they were like wow like she goes in like she shows you like from start like through the process which mm-hmm. i think is which i think is cool what what was the genesis of doing that um i i thought of it maybe like two three years ago just as an idea of something to just engage more i think with social media that was where maybe the the idea spawned from um and i always been a fan of, of rhythm roulette so that was kind of like it's definitely similar, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was just, uh, because I think people really like to see stuff that's, that's more relatable. And so even just like when I would do beat making video or uh, beat videos, not beat making, but, um, on an, on Instagram or wherever, you know, people really like just seeing like the rawness in the studio thing. And the flip it Friday is just like taking it a step further. It's like, you're breaking down the process. So it's for people that don't even really know too much about music and they can start to just be like, Oh, okay. That's, that actually makes sense. Now it's relatable. I could see all the, all the flaws in it. Cause at the end, the end beat that I make still has a bunch of mistakes and the whole time throughout the whole thing, I'm making a bunch of mistakes or whatever. It's just, it just shows the, the rawness of it. So people, it, it, f- it feels just more authentic and more real, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I know I've interviewed people and have heard interviews from people who uh, are are artists, and they talk about early on in their career. I uh, I don't want to name any names because I might have the, I might have the wrong names, but listening to music and just being a fan of hip hop, specifically MCs, uh, but also some DJs, and so you know they they heard these records and, and man, they're just really growing and growing in the art and specifically when it comes to DJs saying the very first time that they had a chance to see like a video of a DJ scratching and thinking I, I was wondering what that what that was that I heard on a record and then the, and then I saw it and just blew my mind and it's so cool I think that we we live in an age now where people can listen to a record and then watch something like Flip It Friday and have a have an understanding of where that came from how does that happen mm-hmm. i know that i am a i'm a youtube junkie man i go mm-hmm. down the youtube rabbit hole and um you know starting to get back into production and so i'm constantly watching videos like flip it friday videos of you know the creation process and i think it's so cool mm-hmm. that you have created an audience specifically to that mm-hmm. but also i think that goes a long way in in branding because you're, you're about to go on tour you're, you're working on your record. So you have these different areas where you're you're hitting different parts or mm, different a different fan base that will right. grow into your brand. And I know that artists oftentimes are trying to figure out, like, how do I do that? Like, what ways do I reach different people? Was that at all a part of the thought process or was it just not? It's just what I do. I just want to do this. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily, but it, it kind of became evident as I started to do it um, that that was that was a really cool bonus, I guess I would say of, of it is that, you know, just reaching out or reaching people that aren't even necessarily, I mean, they, they could be fans of hip hop and stuff, but just really of just like music in general, or just seeing something that's, um, you know, it makes it more understandable and relatable and, and it was enjoyable. And so, I don't know. I mean, one other idea I have is, is to, and it's kind of perfect timing that I'm going to be going on the road. But what I eventually like the end game with the Flip It Friday is I wanted to take it national and start recording episodes in other cities. And then um, I even wanted to have this is probably <laughs> too much, but maybe someday like ha- go to a city, have a guest on the show. Like I've had a couple times just a local artist. It could be any instrumentation or rapper, vocalist, whatever. And the guest on the show and then. I make a beat and then the very end of the show I also play a show and then so that just comes full circle yeah. with it so it's you know you, you see the the making of of a beat and then see the live performance aspect of it yeah. as well yeah. and I try to keep it that's why one re, one of the reasons why I'm kind of stickler about what I'm 
doing creatively without using a computer is because, like I said, I kind of want to keep that that live element and really, really show people what I'm doing because it's not just I think a lot of people have negative connotations to any kind of like electronic music. And if you're showing the the skills of what you're doing while you're playing it live, it it adds a lot to the whole yeah. thing, the whole experience. So, yeah, That's I mean. Stuff. Yeah, I'm well. I know you're going to do it. I'm looking forward to seeing the situation, <laughs> putting it out there, man. Yes. Uh, so one more time, man. Let folk know when the tour comes off or kicks off. So it kicks off um, August eighth. We're gonna be starting off in Florida, which is where Etern lives, and from there, yeah, we're doing our East Coast leg. September thirteenth is gonna be the Portland album release show. Yeah. Yeah. With the chicharrones. Oh, that's what's up. That's uh, crazy, yo. And we're still trying to figure out. Like, I, I don't know the venue yet. I'm having, I'm having a hard time deciding. Uh, where, and I need to hit them up soon because well, whatever it is, it's probably going to get booked. It's already booked. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, so that's that's that. And then this, so that'll be the kickoff of the West Coast leg. Um, and we'll be gone for another month doing that, and I'll be back here mid October. That's crazy. So, yeah, yo. yeah, it's a lot, and. I don't know. I don't know how how we're gonna pull it off, but we're doing it. No doubt. And, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, I've thought about and another thing. Yeah, just uh, being able to have funds to do all of this stuff is crazy. And I've been so torn. I've almost pulled the trigger on doing a crowdfund thing, but mm-hmm. I'm so scared. Mm-hmm, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like it's one of those things. It's like I shouldn't necessarily be shy about it, but it's just yeah. It feels it feels a little weird. And uh, even though I would offer merchandise and you know cds t-shirts whatever it is if people donate so it's like they just essentially be buying something right um but yeah it's it's weird well and i think again i've talked to a lot of artists who feel the same way about Mm -hmm. doing a crowd a crowdfunding situation but i know that we have seen that they can be very successful and i think when you have, I think you have two things going for you if you decide to go that route. One, you already have an audience. You have a fan base. Mm-hmm. Two, you're not just asking people, just give me money so I can go on tour. You're saying, hey, these are the things that I have that I would love to put in your hands anyway. So mm-hmm. like you said, essentially what you're doing is, is you're you're doing two things. You're buying something, something tangible, mm-hmm. but you're also supporting the opportunity to see me live if you're not in Portland. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing that's hard is that, you know, as as an artist any independent artist knows this it's like it takes a lot of investment time and a lot of money to to get these things to happen and a lot of times you don't even break even you know and so it's like putting out a cd you know i'm lucky enough to have a home studio but i'm sure i'll do some of the recording and 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 pay for some of like the mixing mastering stuff um but you know, printing off CDs, and if I do vinyl, I mean, then it's then it's all over because that's yeah. <laughs> that would cost then, a lot then of money. Crowdfunding would be, yeah, that would be a good way to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I've never tried to get uh, vinyl press, but it seems yeah that would be uh, very expensive. So well, shout out to Cascade Record Pressing They're right here, right here in the area. So if you decide to do vinyl, that's who I would. Recommend. Oh, okay, yeah, good to know. I don't, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't have any any leads on all of that so i'll I'll make introductions for you nice yes i love it (laughs) um if people want to uh, see the tour dates if they want to see when you're going to be in their city what's the easiest way to do that um i would say instagram at lisa vasquez music and my last name is spelled v-a-z-q-u-e-z a A lot of people spell it with v-a-s-q-u-e-z so yeah i uh, need to change that right now (laughs) (laughs) well yeah it's it's one of those things it's the most common spelling um of Vasquez so you know the the way my name is spelled is a little different so two z's in the last name so yeah Lisa Vasquez music um both on on Facebook or Instagram just Lisa Vasquez or underscore Lisa Vasquez on Twitter even though I'm not really on Twitter very much <laughs> I need I want to get I want to get my tr- Twitter game up a little bit though it's like I shouldn't discount any of the social media's right. value yeah. so yeah but that's it and Lisa Vasquez.com um links to my band camp so you can get my EP on there and then I'll be uploading new stuff as it comes out yeah that's what's up so that's what's up yep yo Lise thank you so much for doing this man yeah absolutely it's, I've wanted to do it for a while and it's it, these these 
um, podcasts are so cool for me because it gives me an opportunity to to get to know your story and, and uh, I love to have the opportunity to share it with with a wider audience so I appreciate you coming through yeah thank you so much for having me absolutely yeah man. you gonna we gonna we gonna go to the walk to the neighborhood so. hell yeah let's That's do what's it. Up. <laughs> all right y'all so we go we gonna go down the, go down the hallway and do the radio show and you'll be able to hear that interview um, in the future. So let me give a couple shout outs right quick, man. Uh, once again, shout out to Acapella Apparel for their continued support of the Cliff Notes podcast. Check them out at acapella.com. That's A K E P E L E dot com. You can take one of these dope stickers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, also, shout out to X Ray FM for their continued support of the podcast and hosting us here in the X Ray FM studios. Also, you can check out the Cliff Notes podcast on the X Ray FM podcast network. Just go to X Ray pod.com that's x-ray x-ray pod.com and then last but not least man shout out to the homie who has created the official theme song for the cliff notes podcast there he has it all right y'all so uh once again the podcast is available everywhere you listen to your podcast apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify uh, uh now we're on pandora iheart uh so subscribe and uh, tell all your friends about it if you have uh, questions or comments or suggestions you can hit me up at the email cliff notes at gmail.com that's K-O-Y-P-H notes at gmail.com. God bless you until we have an opportunity to do this again. Peace.